Hello, React Native Developers. I hope you are well. William here, recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. The following is a clip from my Reanimated 2 course. It's on the topic of higher order animations. In Reanimated 2, animations are first class citizen into the library and they allow for an incredible level of composability. And I couldn't be more excited to share this clip with you. Before we get into it, let's have a look at the current Reanimated 2 curriculum. And we start with transitions. Transitions are the easiest way to animate things in React Native. And here we have a toggle state, which is a Boolean value. And so we change a React state and we have a nice animation that goes from one state to the other. And then we look at using the pan gesture handler in Reanimated 2. And so here, when I release the gesture, we have a nice decay animation that gives it a feel of being a physical animation and it also bounces nicely with the edges of the screen. And what is interesting about this uh, decay and bouncing animation is not necessarily the animation itself, but how we can use composability in order to build such a complex physics-based animation with a reanimated two. And then we're going to look at animations, which are which is the clip you are about to see where we loop an animation, we can pause it, resume it. And again, here we're going to use the full composability of animations in Reanimated 2. And then we're going to look at SVG animations by building this nice circular slider and by orchest orchestrating also nicely side effects in Reanimated 2, we can nicely animate the value of this uh, SVG circle using the pan gesture handler and reanimated 2. And then we're going to look at animating graphs in reanimated 2. What is interesting about this example, so I can slide the cursor around the SVG path and we can use um, functions to reason about uh, Bezier curves on the UI thread, but also we can format the value. You see the value gets updated here entirely on the UI thread which is not something we were able to do in reanimated one. So here we can format values both on the UI thread and the JavaScript thread using exactly the same functions. And that's one of the benefits of worklets. And then we're going to look at spring animation. So here I'm dragging a card around and the second card follows the position of the first card using a spring animation, giving it an effect of inertia. And same with the third card following the second card. Another example we're going to look, look at is a drag to sort example. So I can drag a card around. We swap the position of the cards when the order changes. And we when the position change, we transition nicely from one position to the other. So really fun example. I am currently recording the new lessons and I will update this curriculum as we go along. Now, I hope that you will enjoy this clip and until next time, happy hacking. React Native developers, the next two lessons are about animations in Reanimated 2. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use them. And in the next one, we're going to learn how to build them. I couldn't be more excited because animations in Reanimated 2 are a completely different paradigm than in Reanimated 1 and in Vanilla Animated. And they allow for a level of composability, which is absolutely delightful. In functional programming, I order functions are functions that can receive functions as parameters and return other functions. Well, in an reanimated two, animations are first class citizen into the library and they can also receive animations as parameters and return animations. This means composability. So for instance, considering a simple timing animation such as this one, so going to the value one, if you want, let's say, to repeat the animation five times, you're going to simply wrap the animation into another animation, repeat with the five uh, iteration parameters. And maybe you want to add some de delay, you're going to do the same thing. Apply a delay to the um, animation. Now, in the reanimated one course, we had this example where we could start an animation, the animation is looping, you can pause the animation at any point, 
and resume it whenever you want. I really liked this example because if you are able to run an animation, loop the animation, pause, resume the animation, it means that you have developed a level of agility with dealing uh, with animation that can take you very far and that can enable you to build complex um, animation. So in Reanimated One, building such an example was actually non-trivial. The barrier to entry was quite high, but once uh, you could go over this barrier to entry, you had developed a level of agility which uh, could take you very far with Reanimated One. In Reanimated Two, if animations are truly composable, this is how such an example should look like. So we would have a timing function that goes from zero to one. And then we loop indefinitely on this animation. So this is what the minus one means, indefinite number of interactions. And then we have the true parameter, which means reverse on the next iteration, the, the animation, meaning that we go from zero to one and then from one to zero, not back from zero to one. And then if we want the animation to be pausable and resumable, we simply pass this animation as parameter of another animation called with pause. And we pass as parameter a shared animation value, which tells us if the animation is paused or not. So if animations are truly composable in Reanimated 2, this is how it should look like. Let me show you, before we jump into the code, let me show you another example. This is a pan gesture example that we've built in a previous lesson. So when I release the gesture, we have a nice decay animation that gives it a physical uh, vibe. Now, if animations in Reanimated 2 are truly composable, if I want, for instance, the card to bounce when it touches the edge of the container, I can simply, or instead of you know building some sort of complex animation, I can simply wrap the with decay with with bouncing to add the bouncing behavior to uh, the decay animation. So with bouncing, I need to pass the boundaries of the containers. And I can, since with bouncing takes care of the bounce, I can remove the clamp in with decay. It's not necessary anymore. And I can do the same for the Y axis. So I need to pass the boundaries of the container. And now let me reload. Now if I, you see the card bounces nicely into the edges and you can configure also the bouncing behavior. So it's actually pretty fun. And I love that we can create uh, these custom animations, which we can use to uh, easily uh, modify the behavior of our animations. Now let's get into the code. Here we have our chat bubble component, which takes a progress value, which goes from zero to one. So here we have zero five, so it's at 50%. Can show you what it looks like at one. So here it's at one, you can have it at zero as well. And we have the play state, is the animation playing or not? We toggle the state on when pressing the button. And so the first thing we're gonna do is to replace this number by a, an animation value, which represents the progress. So I'm gonna call progress equals use shared value, default zero. And we're gonna pass it here as property. So in chat bubble, this becomes an animated dot shared value of number. And we pass it as parameter of the bubble. And so here it's not progress anymore, it's progress dot value. Need to import use shared value. So here we have it at zero. And now what we can do is that when starting the animation, 
we can assign to progress an animation. So it's not going to be a shared value anymore. We're going to assign an animation, loop the animation, and then make it possible, resumable. So what I want to do actually, I mean, what I can do is if, so I want to assign null to the shared value. And null means the shared value hasn't been uh, initialized yet. We haven't assigned an animation to it yet. So the shared value can be null or a number. And if, when we press play, if the animation hasn't been initialized yet, so if progress.value equals null, we assign the animation. So we can do progress.value equals with timing of one. Let's have a look. So if I press play, we go to one. Perfect. Now we want the animation to loop. So we're going to name it repeat. So this video is recorded with reanimated 2 alpha 5. It is very likely that in future version of reanimated, all these animations will be prefixed with with prefix. So with repeat, with timing, and so on. So it is clear that these are higher order animations. So repeat, we want to repeat indefinitely, minus one, and we want the animation to boomerang. So to go from one to zero in the same, so to go from zero to one and then one to zero, not zero to one. So let me import repeat from reanimated. So I play the animation and now it loops nicely. Maybe I want to make it a bit slower. And I want maybe to add some easing. looking good. And now we want the animation to be possible, resumable. So we need a shared value to tell us if the animation should be paused or not. So I'm going to create the paused shared value. And it is so use a shared value. And the default value is the opposite of play. If it's playing, it's not paused, it's false. And if play is false, paused is true. So it's going to be the opposite of play. And we need to toggle the value here as well. So paused.value is its opposite value. And now we're going to use with pause. We pass the animation as parameter. And then we pass the paused shared value to control if the animation should be paused or not. So Repeat with timing are shipped with uh, reanimated. With pause is a custom animation which I built. Probably I'm going to ship it in the upcoming version of Redash. And in the next lesson, we're going to learn how to build these custom animations. So with pause, with bouncing, you can imagine all sorts of uh, animations you can build that can be composable. And this is what we're going to look like in the next lesson. So in this lesson, we learn how to use them. In the next one, we learn how to build them. And so now I have with pause. Let me run the example. So I can play. It loops nicely. I can pause at any point. It's interrupted. And now if I press play again, it should resume nicely exactly at the position it was. And it also remembers you know, where was the direction of the animation. So originally, when I tried to build this example, so I took the reanimated one example and tried to build it with reanimated two. So I was using repeat with timing. And then 
without using higher order animations, I tried to implement the example. So I had to remember for each iteration in which direction the animation was going. I had to, when resuming the animation, I had to finish from where the animation stopped back to one or zero, depending on the direction, and then run the loop again. That was just a big mess. Thanks to higher order animations, we simply express uh, the animation in a very natural way, with pause, with repeat, with timing. And we pass the necessary parameters to each animations. So I hope you guys found this example useful. And in the next lesson, we're going to learn how to build these custom animations.